Good thinking, black one. So we have, uh, let's say we have two charges, two positive charges. And for this one, we will uh, make the assumption they have the same mass. That makes this an easier problem. Okay, now, if this one, um, let's give them, so this we'll just call M, and this we'll call M also. And let's call this one Q1, um, let's call it 2 nanocoulombs, and let's call this one Q2 of 4 nanocoulombs. And let's say they're separated by a distance of, um, I don't know, 2 centimeters. Bless you, sir. Now, if we were going to, or, you know, what happens in this kind of problem is we take these two charges, and, you know, right now, in order to keep them there, we'd have to hold them there, right? Because they're pushing, they're pushing each other apart. They're feeling forces. You know, this one feels a force that points this way that we could calculate, of course. This one feels a force that points that way that we could also, of course, calculate those forces would be KQ1, Q2 over R squared. No problem. All right? With which we could find really an instantaneous acceleration. If we knew this mass, I guess. We don't know the mass. But they, have, they would have some acceleration at this instant. But as soon as this one, for example, actually moves this way, what happens to the force? It gets smaller. Now it's, say, that big. So what happens to its acceleration? It's small, right? And so on and so on. When this thing, you know, when it gets to here, the force on it is even smaller. You know, no matter how far away it gets, it's always going to speed up, right? But the rate at which it speeds up decreases. Make sense? So we can't use any kinematic stuff with this. Because kinematics only deals with constant accelerations. All right, but what we can do is use conservation of energy. And we could ask, for example, how fast is each charge moving when separated? by, um, I don't know, let's say 20 centimeters. So this is a conservation of energy question, but using charge stuff instead of, um, well, we wouldn't talk about their gravitational potential energy. I guess we could, but it's going to be a lot smaller than their electropotential energy. Because we can do, we can write GPE as G mm over r. We can write electric potential energy as kqq over r. How big is g? <coughs> 10 to the negative 11. How big is k? 10 to the positive 9. All right. So that's why electrostatic forces typically, and in this case energies, are a lot bigger. We don't have to really worry about their gravitational effects very small compared to their electrostatic effect. Okay? So what we could say is initially, what kind of energy do you have? What? We just said we're not going to worry about it, gravitational stuff. Two charges separated by a known distance R. They have U. They have initial electric potential energy. And we're saying that they are initially held there that means what? Yes, that means at rest, that means sure that in terms of energy there's no kinetic energy. So we can still talk about kinetic energies. Okay? Now, do I have to actually tell you a mass? I probably do. Let's say these each have a mass of, um, I don't know, uh, let's just say one gram. So I'm going to write it as U 
U final plus Ke final. All right, so we can still do conservation of energy just without gravitational stuff. The reason they end up moving at certain speeds is because they had some, in this case, initial potential energy, electric potential energy. Now, we said we can get rid of this. Um, and we want to know something about this. Well, there's one trick here. Well, maybe there's a couple of tricks. But you know what the trick here is? Yeah, which mass you choose? Well, there are two masses. So this is really Ke1 final plus Ke2 final. We have to use both of them. There are two objects moving. U initial equals U final plus that. Now what's nice is these have the same mass, right? So So, uh, in a harder kind of problem, which we'll kind of forego, if we wanted to relate their speeds, these things are going to have the same speeds because they have the same mass. If this one, say, had a mass of twice the other one, we'd actually have to conserve momentum to relate their speeds. No. We'll a, we'll a, I'll ask you only um, equal mass one. Okay, do you get that? So if this one had a mass of, say, I don't know, 4 grams, well, whatever speed it had this way would be one-fourth the speed that this one has that way. Does that make sense? To conserve momentum? But we'll just say here that their masses are the same, therefore their speeds are going to be the same. Okay? So you know how we can write U initial in terms of what we're given? Say it again. No squared, of course. No squared. Now I'm going to do this minus K, well, I'm going to call this R initial. Minus K Q1 Q2 over R final equals 1 half MV1, sorry, M1 V1 final squared plus one-half M2 V2 final squared. Right? There are two Qs, so two Ke finals. Yes, ma'am. Absolutely, since energies are scalars, it does not matter at all that one's going this way and one's going that way. does not matter at all. We would not say that there's zero kinetic energy, even if they're moving at the same speed and opposite directions at the same mass. There is kinetic energy. There's energy in motion. Yes, sir. If the charges were the same, would it be just one kinetic energy statement, or would you still have to say? No, there's still two. Because even if the charges were the same but the masses are different, then the speeds aren't the same. Because if the masses are different, then conservation of momentum says the speeds have to be different. Like if, they were, if they were the same, just identical charges, identical mass. As long as the as long as the masses are the same, the speeds are gonna are gonna be the same, and we do end up turning this into just m v final squared. So this turns into that since there's two of them that are exactly the same. All right, and that's only if masses are the same. Okay, so I'm going to do this as, uh, I don't know, we can write it as KQ1, Q2, 1 over R initial, 1 over R final, equals that. Just factored out that KQ1, Q2.
Yeah, you get, we got that. See how we got to here? It's because these are both one half. Just add them up. Gives us the one pole. So we could divide by the mass. We could take the square root. And we could figure out how fast those things are going. Yeah, that's what I got. So not very fast, right? Any explanation as to why not very fast? Yeah, the force keeps decreasing. I mean, my gut says, you know, those are pretty small charges, maybe. And these are, you know, non-negligible masses, you know, a gram. It's like a paper clip that you give a charge of, you know, P nano coulombs. 